wonderful performance. Thank you so, so much. How are you all doing? Did you enjoy that? That was really special. Wow. Okay, just before we head into a time of praise and worship, which we will be doing in just a few moments, I'd like to share a few thoughts with you. Is that okay? I know Jesus has been speaking clearly to some of you here today. Even in the tent tonight, you know, those songs were definitely centered in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And as we reflect for just a few moments on who Jesus is, and before we begin to sing and lift our voices and get into an attitude of worship, I just believe that God wants to do something really unique in your lives tonight. Something really special in your hearts tonight, if you allow him. I'd like to just share a little bit about myself. You might have been here earlier, I introduced myself. My name is Lydia, and I've come down from London with my husband, Ben, and my daughter, Tula Ray. She's just 10 months old. But I haven't always been a believer in Jesus Christ. And I've come all this way to tell you a little bit about my journey. And I hope that it would encourage you on your journey. When I was just a teenager, I found myself hung up on drugs. I was depressed, and at my worst point, I was suicidal. I saw little hope for my future, and I saw no way out. I was one of the lucky ones, I suppose. I had a sister that prayed for me and led me to church, where I was reunited in a relationship with Jesus. For I had met him once before when I was very young, just nine years old. It was like every word the preacher was saying that day was directed at me. I began to realize that Jesus was calling me. He was reaching out and trying to heal my life. Back home into relationship with him. I was desperate and I wanted a new life. I realized that I was carrying on, on a path that I found myself on, that I wouldn't live. I invited Jesus into my heart that day, and my life has never been the same again. When I say I invited Jesus into my heart, what I mean is that I came to a place where I realized that my life was in pieces. I acknowledged and I understood that I was in need of a savior. I wanted to know what forgiveness felt like. I wanted to be rid of guilt and I wanted to understand how it was to forgive those that had hurt me in my past. It hasn't been a walk in the park, I can tell you that for sure. In fact, it's been really hard work at times and challenging. But by the power that God has invested in me, he has healed my heart. And I've experienced freedom, and I've seen dreams come to life through the power of Christ that work in and through my life. In Psalm 139, verse 12, the Bible says, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like day, for the darkness is as light to you. I knew I was in a dark place. I knew I'd done wrong things in my life. I knew that I was lost and I was depending on people and substances that were not healthy for me. But what I was convinced of is that I got myself into this mess and I was the only one that could fix things. How wrong was I? The drugs were just a mask that I wore to hide my pain. I grew up in a broken family. It was a dysfunctional family. My father left when I was just seven years old, when my parents' marriage broke down. My mother turned to drink and drug addiction, which made her violent and volatile. I'd experienced neglect, abuse, rejection, fear, hunger. I'd seen things no child should ever see by the time I was nine years old. 
I was desperate in need of repair from the inside out. And I knew I, could fi I couldn't fix myself. I tried and nothing would satisfy. This passage has always been with me for many, many years. I love it because it stands out to me and it reminds me that Jesus comes into the dark places in our world. He comes into the dark places in your heart, the dark places in your life. He's not intimidated by what you've done or where you've been. He's not scared by our mess and our junk. He's on a mission to save you. Even if you think you don't need saving, you do. We all do. Jesus wants to restore all that's been taken from you and heal you and put you back together. When we are depressed, God says, look up. I'm the God that heals you. When we are suffering from fear and anxiety, Jesus says, I came that you might have life and have life to the full. And that his perfect love casts out all fear. If you're weak here today, can I encourage you to let Jesus be your strength? to stop shutting him out. I've been healed by God and blessed with my own incredible family. And together my husband and I are rewriting my history as God continues to restore my life. And I want to remind you here tonight that we do have an enemy. The Bible sometimes describes him as our adversary. This enemy doesn't want to see you full and happy, no. He wants to distract you from the plan that God has for your life. Don't let him steal what doesn't belong to him. Call back your confidence in Jesus' name. Call back your relationships in Jesus' name. Call back your health and your dreams in Jesus' name. Your story may be a, be a whole lot different to mine. In fact, you might be thinking, I have a perfect life. I have a perfect family. I don't need a God on a rescue mission to save me. You may spend all your time promoting your perfect life on social media, but deep down, you feel empty, unfulfilled. That, my friend, is the place that God wants to fill tonight. You don't need a new career, a new outfit, a new set of friends, a new phone, a new postcode. We need Jesus. You may be new to this kind of environment. This might be a completely new experience for you tonight. Or this could be something really familiar. You know, you come to Creation Fest every year. You sit in this shed every year. You hear the same messages every year and you might have lost your passion for Jesus. That's okay. God wants to meet with you tonight. He wants to ignite the flames in your heart once again and restore you into relationship with him again. For some of you, you don't take your faith seriously. Like I said, this is a familiar environment. Maybe even you, you might even think that your faith is a joke. Jesus is here to remind you about who he is. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Lord of Lords, the God Almighty, the Lion and the Lamb, Emmanuel. Jesus is everything. He is the light of the world. He is the light shining in the darkness and he's coming to you tonight. He's speaking to you tonight. And for those of you that find yourself in this environment for the first time, maybe a friend dragged you along, and you're like, what are you on about, Lydia? I don't understand any of what you just said. And you feel, maybe you feel uncomfortable, even as I'm speaking now. I'm here to encourage you to be yourself in this place. There is no judgment in this place. Just do you. God doesn't wanna change you from the outside looking out. He wants to change you from the inside looking out. Come before him tonight just as you are. No one's looking at you or condemning you. And I know that there's been words spoken to you tonight that have made you feel like someone knows what you've been through. That, my friend, is God reaching out to you. He's reaching out to you tonight. 
He's giving you a gentle nudge. He's saying, here I am, come to me. Jesus came into the world to save us, to restore us, to rescue us, to give us a second chance at life. Who could do with a second chance today? Who could do with a new life today, a brand new start? God is offering you that today. He died on a cross 2,000 years ago for our sins so that we could be saved and forgiven, restored into relationship with God on the 4th of August, 2019. There is no time like the present. God is calling you now. He loves you, he knows you, he's passionate about you. Bring your fears, your anxieties, your disappointments, your guilts, your secrets to his feet tonight. We all have a story and God knows your story. He knows it intimately. He knows what we've done. He knows where we've been. He knows the deep pains that we hide from the world. If we simply want to experience new life today, I want, and if you would like to invite Jesus into your heart, I'd love to say a prayer with you in just a few moments. If you accept that you have sinned, that you've done things your own way, that you've tried to do things your own way, you've tried to change your life, you've tried to change your diet, you've tried to change your friends, but nothing seems to fix you. You might have cut yourself to make yourself feel better. You might have taken something to make yourself feel better, but the fear and the anxiety is still there. Jesus wants to heal you. I'd love you to just take a few moments. If you'd like to stand to your feet, I'd love us to pray together, is that okay? If you feel like anything of what I've said tonight has resonated with you, if you feel like you would like a new start in life and that you would love to know this man, Jesus, then I'd love you to pray with me in just a moment. But this is a really special moment, so I just ask that no one is moving in and out of the room. This could be a life transformation for someone today. This could be the most important day for the rest of their lives. So let's honor this moment. If you know its significance, you know who you are. Can we all just close our eyes? If you'd like to know Jesus tonight, I'd just like you to, as a response, no one's looking, everyone's eyes are closed. I'd love you for you to just raise your hand as all our eyes are closed in this place tonight. There's a prayer team and uh, they will be on the side to the right of us and they would love to pray with you and give you some more information. But let us just pray, all God's people, let's pray with these people tonight. Let's encourage them. And after me, would you just like to say, Dear Lord Jesus, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. I ask that you would be Lord of my life from this day forward. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for new life. In Jesus' name, amen. You might not have felt anything, you might have said that prayer in your heart, but may I just encourage you, something very significant has just taken place. You are now a Christian. And I'd like to just speak to another group of people in this place tonight. You might have been a Christian for a long time but you feel distant from God tonight. You almost feel like a stranger. And you may be going through the motions in your faith and you need that fire to be reignited in you. Can we just pray together for a moment? And if you'd like ministry, there is a prayer team to my right. They've got green t-shirts on, they'd love to pray for you just as we have a moment of response as we go into a time of singing. But dear Lord Jesus, I just pray for your people tonight. I pray for open hearts and open minds. I pray, Father God, that you would have your way in this place. Holy Spirit, that you would move. 
as we seek you, Lord, that you are not hiding, you are here. You are here with us. You are moving amongst your people. You delight in your people, God. You love your people so much. So God, we thank you for each and every person here. We ask, Lord, that you would restore, replenish what maybe the desert places have taken from them or the wilderness has taken from them, God. I pray for rivers of living water tonight to wash over your people.